Hello, and in this video, we're going to go over how to make your very own 3D printed egg turner. A few years ago, we decided to turn an old refrigerator into an incubator, and we wanted to be able to maximize the amount of potential eggs we could hatch in this refrigerator. And, you know, I, as usual, I go in, went a little overboard, and uh, instead of buying a commercial egg turner, I decided I would design my own, which would really let me put a lot, hatch a lot of eggs in this incubator. So to give you a, a, a reference for what it looks like when you uh, convert just a standard refrigerator to hatch eggs, um, just the freezer section can hold four of these trays. And these trays can hold um, two dozen eggs a piece. So our test run, we ran just two of these units, and that was you know 48 eggs. So, and we got a hatch rate of, um, well, we ha out of the 48, I think we hatched 36 to 38, somewhere in there, um, with uh, most of the unhatched eggs being not fertilized. So that worked out really well. That was pretty cool. All right, so. Um, this is a uh, final unit that I produced. This one was actually not used in that run. Um, it's almost identical to the ones that were used in that run, except that this one has a steel rod down the center. Uh, yeah, and that was a... If you're going to do more than you know two or three of these in a row, use a steel rod. Uh, once you start putting eggs in it, there's just not enough the wood... The wooden rods just aren't strong enough. Let's see, what else? Um, all right, so differences between this one and what we're going to be assembling today. The primary different, the the primary difference between this one and this uh, prototype here um, is the keying for the dowels to join the uh, cradles together. This one has no keying. This one has a key. Here is an intermediate step, uh, so no keying. First attempt at keying. In fact, almost all of the keys on this, uh, for the rest of them, are this style. Uh, it's just I wanted something that held tighter uh, for these pieces that join the cradles together. So I went with that style instead. And I learned all of this. I learned everything I needed to do to make, to design and print the 3D items from Maker's Muse. Um, if you haven't checked him out, he's really, he's a really cool, positive, um, uh, Australian fellow. Love his videos. You know, I'll put them on just, sometimes I'll just put his videos on in the background just to ha just to give myself some company as I, uh, you know, work around the farm here. All right. So, uh, on to the assembly. Actually, let's go over what you'll need first. So down in the, in the, uh, instruction or uh, comments you'll see a link to a blog post I put up that has the STL files for all of these there's actually only four STL files you have one STL file for the leg both legs are identical you'll have an STL file for the egg cradle itself you'll have an ST and then you'll have an STL file for for the five spur gear and the ten spur gear this has most of its gears removed because they're not needed, but this is the 10 spur and that's the five spur. All right, so those are the 3D printed files you'll need. Um, next, you'll need an MG90S uh, micro servo. I'll try to put links down into the, the comments for the thing these things. The, um, I don't know if Amazon will still have the things that I purchased, but for the, for the items that are there, I'll put links down. All right, another thing you're going to need is um, two quarter inch wooden dowels. Uh, these are, uh, on this particular model, I think these are um, 100 millimeter pull per cradle plus 20 centimeters per leg plus four millimeters or so for the clearances on the ends. That's how you get the measurements. Um, that's in the, That information is in the blog post. So that would make these, that's a, um, 200 plus 240 plus 4, so 244, 244 um, millimeters. And then 
this is a this is the central rod. Um, you want it to be about twenty centimeters longer than your other the other two rods. Um, that's the actual the, the the central axle that everything pivots on. Then you're gonna want for every one of these joints you have between cradles, you're gonna want um, two 15 millimeter uh, quarter inch dowels. You can see these just go in there. And that allows you to connect these together. And that's th these are really what hold the whole assembly together as, and make it twist as one. Um, now, I'm not going to be using these when I do the assembly because this prototype lacks the uh, key. And so those are a real pain to get in. Uh, the, center, the center hole is actually slightly bigger. So um, the center dowel will just slide right in. All right. And then what else do we need? Um, two of these, about 40 millimeters. Uh, these, are go these connect in, if you look over here, uh, that's the rod that goes from the 10 spur gear into the first egg cradle. And that's what allows the whole thing to rotate automatically. So I'm right, gonna set those there. And then um, some other things you may want, like on this one, I had some trouble, I don't know what that was, uh, with these dowels popping out. Just I don't really have enough penetration in here. Uh, and so uh, I did put some hot glue on the end of that. Not all of them have hot glue. Some of them, I don't think all of them have hot glue. And then the other thing you may want is a little bit of super glue, specifically if you have taken this gear on and off a few times and it no longer wants to um, hold on to the shaft very well you can put a little bit of super glue on there and that'll help that stay in place uh, all right what else that is that's pretty much it all right on to the assembly and again if the the write-up for this assembly is in the blog post so link down below um, I actually made the blog post so I'd have a place to put the STL files. So uh, we don't actually drive traffic to the blog. It's mostly for our customers to see pricing and whatnot. Okay, so assembly. Um, first things first is to put the servo in the leg. Now, when you put the servo in the leg, you're going to make sure that the shaft, and this is, see that the shaft is not centered. You're going to want that towards the top. And on this servo, that's also where the cable is. So this hole is made slightly larger so you can accommodate that cable. Um, and then put your screws in. Now these are, there. Were, there's no pre-drilled holes in the egg cradle or the, uh, the leg here uh, for these. These are just wood screws that came with the servo and they go into PLA pretty well. Um, the 3D print being at least in my opinion, a lot like a wood product. It's got grain and tends to warp in certain directions if you're not careful. Uh, so anyway, put those screws in. All right, so that's the first leg. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take your dowels for that are uh, your bottom dowels here that hold the legs together and put them in the opposite one. And I say put them in the opposite one just because when you're assembling it, you're going to set it, you're going to end up wanting to set it on the end like that. And, uh, you know, with the shaft sticking out, you're going to have problems. Uh, all right. Now, one of the other things you're going to want to consider is while, before you have this on, if you haven't already attached this gear, attach it, put it on, and put the screw in. Because this hole is smaller than this shaft and you're gonna be pressing it on into place um, and kind of pressing those gears into the plastic. So um, it's easier to do that when you can hold it in your hand like that. So do this first, then pop it back off. All right, now uh, take your 
two. I'll use this red one here because it's a it'll be a better example. Um, put your quarter inch dowels in your uh, uh, outermost holes on here, and then take your center shaft and push that through. Oh, I'm off camera. All right, so center dot or your dowels over here. Yeah, those are the 15 millimeter dowels, and then your center shaft will go all the way through. Uh, you don't need to stick it out yet. Just get it in there. And then take your next cradle and slide that on. And then press them together. Now you see this one pushed all the way through. That's because this doesn't have uh, the keying, and so it's really tight. But on the, uh, again, on the STL files that I have downloaded, they're keyed like this one. So you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Um, if they do push out like that, you just uh, you should be able to push them back in. Um, so no, I guess that's another difference. These ones don't have the hole going all the way through, and in the production version, it actually goes through, so you can access them from the inside. Um, all right. So once you have that assembled, then you can um, push that a little farther through. Uh, or you could just put it this way, and then, so here, long end, rod sitting there, and this whole thing, you can push down and make level with that, uh, which works out pretty well. Now, the center is longer than these sides, so what you're going to want to do is slip that over, and it's also the center is... Uh, meant to rotate free so it's wider. And then you can line up your other uh, two dowels. And what you want is this to be snug, but not so snug that it finds the direction because this assembly holds um, all of this together. Um, and, well, it doesn't hold it together. What it does is hold this gear in place. These rods actually hold the whole thing together. So again, if you're if you're not if you're having trouble and these are not fitting tightly, um, you um, you know dowels are vary in width. Um, even the dowels I have, some of them are narrow at one end than the other. You can put a little hot glue or super glue on them to hold those in place. I would prefer not to glue them because I like to, I'd like to be able to disassemble the whole thing. Um, like say if you have a, a nasty egg breaks open, you could disassemble disassemble the whole thing and throw these things in cold water. That's another point. P this is all PLA. PLA has a low melting point, so if you overheat it, it will sag. Okay, next step. Um, so take your 40 millimeter dowels and stick them in your uh, 10 spur gear, or 10 tooth spur gear, and then you can slide that on and slide that in place right there. You see I popped that out a little bit, so we're going to want to make sure our spacing. I'm having a little trouble with that foot holding, actually. I have taken this apart many times, many, many times. Um, actually, in attempts to make this video a lot. All right, so now that we're... Now that's actually completely assembled as far as you probably want to go until you have... Um, your, your way to center this. Um, so this is a servo gear and it's it actually has it knows its positions. So it has a center position. So um, I can't remember if it's a, a artifact of the way I programmed it or artifact of the serv of the servo, but you know, this is position one. This is position seven and this is position 14 I think. So you need to have the cradle in the position um, that the servo is set for. So uh, you know, you'll want to set it to whatever. I like to use position seven this, because that's nice and centered. So you get your servo centered, and then you can put your gear on your spur gear. And these always. You know, when I'm not running the video, these just pop right on, and when I'm running the video, they don't. All right, and you can.
can see it's not quite perfect, but um, it's easier to do this uh, when you're not on camera. And then, so I'm just going to pretend that I centered that. And I thought it actually stopped one way or the other when you if you moved it manually, but I was just playing with it and it didn't appear to do that. So, anyway, there it is. And the whole thing. Um, and the servo does not really like you moving it but manually. Um, so if you wanted to just, if you just wanted to use this as a bulk egg turner so you didn't have to turn each individual egg and didn't want to start run with a uh, computer or have it computer controlled, just leave the servo out. Uh, so like see if I take this gear off, or the, you know, take that gear off. You can then see this is pretty well balanced and you can go either direction and as long as your eggs are in there balanced you should be fine um, if you're a if you're having some balance issues what you could do is put some tape around the rods um, to uh, give a little friction and again that would allow you to turn the eggs without the uh, motor attached and how do I how do I know that well I mentioned this one has a steel rod in it um, so I ran into a couple issues prototyping this out. One was while I was doing the programming for the incubator, I uh, accidentally left the, the heater on in the insulated chamber and lost an entire uh, set of these uh, because it got hot enough that the PLA all deformed. Um, so that was, you know, when, if you, when you're making your own, um, keep, I would suggest uh, getting your heat, your heat, um, regulation figured out first before you start putting your PLA items into the incubator. Uh, the other item that I ran into was the, yeah, the center dowel. I have a steel one in this one. The first, uh, some of the earlier drafts I used a wooden dowel and uh, once loaded up with some eggs and uh, trying to turn it, it ended up sagging and the only way to turn them was to pop the gear off and manually rotate them. So the because of the sagging, everything bound up. All right, so that's pretty much it. I will make a, another video in the future on how to actually do the programming. If you look over here, this is the actual incubator controller um, out of the incubator I built. Uh, I will be making more videos on this project. Just uh, yeah, it's winter and the incubator's out in the barn and it's cold and dusty and I want to be able to get that cleaned up before I uh, get too much into that project but thought this might be useful to some of you so hope you enjoyed it uh, if you want to make your own check out the links in the attached um, comment section and hope you all have a good day